Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel where previously we have started discussing the diversity factors and we've, we've, we've mostly done the basic definitions. Today we see some examples on it. So I did not discuss the examples on the previous video because uh, then it gets long and then it gets boring, right? Yes. So let's make this video an examples video. Examples related to the diversity factors, etc. So the first example is, it is mentioned, I'll read out the question from here and I write the data on the board, right? So a metropolitan building with six residential apartments so you have a building where what do you have a building has six residential apartments three offices and one shop these are the three things in that building and this building has an overall diversity factor of 1.4 this building has a diversity factor of 1.4 and a power factor of 0 0.85 lagging right yes the connected load of each entity is given so each residential apartment has a load of 6 kilowatts each office has a load of 4 kilowatts and the shop has got a load of 3.5 kilowatts. Determine the rating of the transformer required. So the transformer required is unknown. All right, yes. Now, so for the transformer requirement, we will need what you need to know about the maximum demand. Yes, yes. You are given what? You are given the connected load. Yes, yes. Now what do you have is, in case when the demand factor is not given, when the demand factor is not mentioned, take the connected load equal to the maximum demand, right? So let me write down this point that if the demand factor FD is not given, not mentioned, do what? Take the connected load that is given over here take pt as the maximum demand pm right so what do you have is the summation of the maximum demands would be what the summation of the maximum demands you can calculate from here so the summation of the maximum demands this would be like this or you could say that the max uh, first you can uh, calculate this the maximum demand of the residential load so this would be six six residential apartments each having a load of six kilowatts so this would be a 36 kilowatts load pm of the residential which is equal to the connected load pt of the residential similarly the connected load pt of the office this is equal to the maximum demand of the office is equal to what four multiply three is 12 kilowatts and similarly the pt for the shop which is equal to the pm for the shop this is 3.5 kilowatts now why have i taken pt equal to pm because the demand factor is not known i'll take it as unity i'll consider the connected load equal to the maximum demand right yes now the summation of the maximum demands so summation of the maximum demand i would have 36 plus 12 gives me what uh, 38 48 plus 3.5 so 49 51.5 51.5 kilowatts is the summation of the maximum demand right yes now the maximum demand i can calculate on what this would now be the maximum demand for the whole system right so that would be the summation of the maximum demands divided by the overall diversity factor given so this comes out to be 51.5 divided by 1.1.4 so the maximum demand on the system comes out to be 36.78 kilowatts 36.7 kilowatts now this is the maximum demand in kilowatts but we need the transformer rating so the transformer rating is in kvas not in kilowatts and why is that so we'll study it in the power factor although but the rating of the equipment is in 
kvas right so we have to convert this kilowatt into the kvas so the kva is what kva is the kilowatts divided by the power factor cos of phi so this would be the uh, 36.7 divided by 0.85 and this is equal to what 43.27 so this is the kvas that you require for the transformer so let it be a little more than that the available transformer would be not exactly 43.27 you should consider a little higher value so i would suggest a 50 kva transformer for this particular building right yes so the power factor we'll all the, we'll see it in a great detail but the real power is p it's in the x-axis then the reactive power is q it's either upwards or downward depending on the capacity for inductive load right and then you've got the apparent power that is s and this angle this is the power factor angle so cos of phi is basically the real power p divided by the apparent power s s is in kvas P is in kilowatts, Q is in kvars. We'll see this in a greater detail, but for now, I believe this should be it. This should be it, right? Yes. So this is the first example. Get, let me get to the book example. Example number 3.5, I believe, relates to this thing. So 3.5 states what? A diesel station supplies the following loads to various consumers. You are given an industrial consumer. Example. So you are given an industrial consumer having 1500 kilowatt load. 1500 kilowatt. Then a commercial consumer having 750 kilowatts. Uh, domestic power is 100 kilowatt and then you have another sort of a load is what domestic light so that is a 450 kilowatts so these are the loads given which are being supplied by a diesel power station if the maximum demand on the station is Station maximum demand, station maximum demand, which means the overall maximum demand is a 2500 kilowatts. And the number of kilowatt hours generated per year, so which means these are the number of energy units. So 45 into 10 to the power 5 kilowatt hours or energy unit, these are generated annually determine the diversity factor and the annual load factor so the diversity factor is unknown and the second is the annual load factor is unknown so have a look what is the diversity factor it is the summation of the maximum demands to the maximum demand of the maximum demand of the station so you have got the summation of the maximum demand again i told you if the de demand factor is not given take the load as the maximum demand so the summation of the maximum demand would be 1500 plus 750 plus 100 plus 450 so what is this this comes out to be okay the book has not written it uh, let me write it so 1500 plus 750 plus plus 100 plus 450 and this would be divided by 2500 the value of this diversity factor comes out to be what value comes out to be 1.12 1.12 now the load factor you have is the energy divided by the maximum demand into time yes so you've got all the values you've got the value of energy you've got the maximum demand you've got time so energy is what it's 45 into 10 to the power 5 divided by maximum demand is 2500 into the time if this is annually so for annually you put the number of hours in a year 8760 hours in a year are 8760 because you have 365 days multiply it with 24 you get 8760 this load factor comes out to be 20.5 percent a very low value not good value 20.5% you take the average load you uh, and this e divided by t is what this e divided by t is basically the average load from the definition again 
So you could also do this as an average load separately. First find out E divided by D and then for load factor you divide P divided by PM. Right? Yes, sir. This is example number 3.5. The next example is what? It's example number 3.7. A power supply is having the following loads. Let me change the color. A power supply is having the following loads. Can I write down? Yes, I can. So the next example is, let's say with the, with the red color. A power supply is having the following loads. So the type of the load is mentioned. Then you have the maximum demand mentioned. Then you have, this is in kilowatts, okay. Then you have the diversity of the group. And then you have the demand factor. So this is domestic, commercial, industrial. Domestic, commercial, industrial. The maximum demand in kilowatts is 1500, 2000 and 10,000. The diversity is 1.2, 1.1 and 1.25. Then you have 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and 1. These are the diversity factor, demand factors. If the overall system diversity factor is 1.35, the system diversity factor is 1.35, determine the maximum demand and the connected load of each type. So the maximum demand is unknown and the connected load PT of each type is unknown. So these are the two unknowns. So what do you do for the, for the maximum demand first? So the sum of the maximum demands of the three types would be what? The sum of the maximum demands. The sum of maximum demand of the three types would be 1500 plus 2000 plus 10,000. So 13,500, right? The sum of the maximum demand would be 13,500 kilowatts. Yes, yes. Now what do you have? The system diversity factor is given. So which means the maximum demand of the system would be what? The maximum demand of the system would be, where is the formula? This is the formula summation divided by the diversity factor. So 13,500 divided by what? 1.35. Yes, 1.35. So this comes out to be 10,000. 10,000 kilowatts. So the maximum demand of the system is 10,000 kilowatts. Fine? Yes, sir. Now, the next is to find the connected load of each. So this is done. Now to find the connected load, what do you, you have from the formula of, the, of this that FD, the demand factor is the connected load PT upon PM or PM upon PT. What is the formula? What is the formula? Uh, I believe this is the formula or if it's wrong, so please just, just check it or I will check it by myself in just a while. In just a second, I believe that I have written it correctly. The demand factor is the maximum demand by connected load. So this I have written opposite. It's the maximum demand divided by the connected load. So I need what? I need the connected load. So first of all, if you see what would be the case, what would be the case is that I would have each type of load has its own diversity factor is given among its own group. So you have a diversity factor of the first group, you have the diversity factor for the second commercial and then finally you have the diversity factor. So this is among these three. So which means what? That this is the, the group is given. This PM is not for a single consumer, this is given for a group which means this is a summation already. So which means the sum of the maximum demand of domestic consumer is. So this would from here I would find the sum of the maximum demands. So which means the sum of the maximum demand for the domestic consumer is what? This would be 1500 multiplied by its diversity factor that is 1.2. So 1500 would be multiplied with 1.2 and this comes out to be what? This comes out to be 1800 kilowatts, 1800 kilowatts. So this is the, 
the maximum demand so which means now you would have what the connected load so the connected load would be pt for the domestic pt for domestic would come out to be pm upon fd so 1800 divided by its diversity uh, its demand that is 0.8 so this comes out to be what the value is 2250 kilowatts 2250 kilowatts okay the next would be what you would find the maximum demand of the of the industry of the commercial consumer and this would be the summation yes yes why because this is not for a single consumer right so you would multiply its uh, its maximum demand 2000 with what with a with 1 point with 0 0.9 with 0 0.9 so this would give you a value let's say x right and then to find the connected load pt of the commercial consumer you will divide this value of x by its what no sorry this would be multiplied with 1.1 1 .1. 1.1 and then you will divide this by a 0 0.9 yes so the value would come out to be 24 2444 kilowatts 244 kilowatts right yes similarly for the last the industrial consumer the the, the connected uh, the maximum demand for industrial and this would be the summation of the maximum demands would come out to be 10,000 multiplied 1.25 so you have a 10,000 multiply 1.25 for instance this is a value y now the connected load for the industrial consumer would be this value y divided by 1 and this is this is y again so this comes out to be what where is it this is 12500 kilowatts this is 12500 kilowatts and that is it for this example i hope that you have understood it right yes next example please what does the next example says this was 3.5 next we have 3.7 no this was 3.7 now we have 3.8 so again the same sort of an example 3.8 is again the same thing let me just write example 3.8 okay so at the end of a power system a certain feeder supplies three distribution transformers each one supplying a group of consumers whose uh, 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 commer connected loads are as under so you are given the transformer you are given its load and you are given its demand factor FD and finally its diversity so again the same problem basically so what do you have is well, let's say we've given three transformers T1 T2 and T3 the load is 10 kilowatts 20 kilowatts and 15 kilowatts the demand factor is 0 0.65 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 the diversity in the group is 1.5 3.5 and 1.5 if the diversity factor among the transformers is 1.3 diversity factor among transformers is 1.3 find the maximum load on the feeder find the maximum load on the on the feeder is unknown so i told you over here have a look this is the reason that I have not uh, removed this so the reason was that I need to find the maximum demand on the feeder so for that I need to have the summation on the maximum demand between the transformers and then the diversity factor between the transformers so diversity I have among the transformers I need to find the summation of the maximum demands uh, along the transformers all right yes so how, how would I do that so the summation of the maximum demand on the transformer would be what pm of let's say transformer 1 so this would be the connected load which is 10 multiplied by 0 0.65 so this would give me summation of maximum demand transformer 1 that would be what 6.5 kilowatts 6.5 kilowatts 
right yes similarly then i would have the summation of the maximum demand of transformer 2 would be 12 multiply 0 0.6 and this would be let's say x similarly summation of the maximum demand on transformer 3 would be 15 multiply 0 0.7 let's say this is y fine so i've got the summation of the maximum demands now the individual maximum demand would be what so the individual maximum demand would come from here 6.5 divided by diversity factor which is 1.5 similarly for the for the second transformer it would be x upon 3.5 and similarly for the third transformer it would be y upon 1.5 and the values are what 4.33 2.0 4.33 kilowatts 2.057 kilowatts and finally for the third it is 7 kilowatts it is 7 kilowatts so now what do you have you have got the individual maximum demands now you need to sum them so the maximum demand on the feeder would be what from this formula for instance i will name this as a so a implies what that you have the maximum demand which would be equal to the summation of maximum demand on transformers so transformer one has this maximum demand two this three this so 4.33 plus 2.057 plus 7 and this is whole divided by 1.3 to give you the maximum demand on the feeder which is what it is 10.3 kilowatts 10.3 kilowatts and this is your answer and i oh oh oh, oh what is this i am this is for the second time that i am doing this i'm sorry okay so i hope this is clear till here okay so we have i believe two more examples over here let me remove the board first okay so i've let this be because the question is just a similar one so again we are given an 11 kilovolts 5 kilometer long distribution feeder from a grid substation supplies load through three 200 kva transformers so well these things are not necessary to us that this is an 11 kilovolts line 5 kilometers long 200 kva transformers whatever it is to residential consumers it is supplying the data is given as follows you have three transformers one two three the load is in kilowatts 120 on this one 100 on this one and uh, no 180 on this one and 100 kilowatts on this one the demand factor is 0.6 0.6 and 0.75 the diversity is 1.3 2.5 and 1.5 right yes sir so what do you have is if the diversity among the transformers is 1.5 transformers diversity factor is 1.5 considering unity power factor find the possible maximum demand power factor is unity find the maximum demand on the feeder maximum load on the feeder so which means the maximum demand is unknown so you have to use this formula again maximum demand on the feeder would be summation of maximum demands and transformers so you need maximum demand on each transformer so for that what do you have first you will find the summation of the maximum demands which would be what which would be the load 120 multiplied by its the uh, demand factor 0 0.6 so you have a value from here then 180 multiply 0 0.6 for the second and then 100 multiply 0 0.75 for the third what do you get is 72 108 and 75 72 108 and 70 Five. so these are in kilowatts the summation of the maximum demands now the individual maximum demand on each transformer so you divide the summation uh, uh, by its diversity so 1.3 108 divided by 2.5 and uh, 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 75 divided by 1.5 so these values come out to be 55.38 
50 in kilowatts okay so now you've got the individual maximum demands so now for the maximum demand on the feeder or the maximum load on the feeder you take the sum of these three 55.38 plus 43.2 plus 50 and this is whole divided by the overall diversity factor which is 1.5 so the maximum demand on the feeder would come out to be 99.05 kilowatts and that is the answer so this is how you do it right yes now the next question i have a misprint over here so we don't do it anyways right yes Let's say we do an example from the book is example number for instance 3.11 3.11 or 3.12 so I believe both of them are the same so let's say we do 3.11 example number 3.11 now what does this state a power station has to meet the following demand a group is given so you have a group A which has the load of 200 kilowatts and the time for this is 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Then you have another group that is B you have to feed 100 kilowatts to 8 kilowatts and that is 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Then you have a group C that you, which requires the 50 kilowatts and that is between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. again. And then you have a group D which has 100 kilowatts, kilowatts between 10 to 6, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then between 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then between 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So which means it's going to 6 a.m. directly. 10 a.m. to the overall 6 a.m. So plot the daily load curve. Plot the daily load curve. This would be the first part. The second part is uh, that you have the, to find the diversity factor. The units generated per day E and the load factor FLD so these are the things that are unknown so I suggest what the method of doing this is to divide the time in certain intervals and let's say the book has divided it into intervals so the first is from 0 to 6 so the first is F from 0 to 6 uh, so from 0 to 6 you have consumer A B C and D so you make a tabular form so 0 to 6 you don't have any load on A right yes then on B you also don't have any load on C you also don't have any load so on D you have a load that is a 100 kilowatts then let's say for the next is from 6 to 8 so 6 to 8 you don't have a load over here 6 to 8 you have a load of 100 over here and then you have 50 over here and 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. you have a 100 over here again yes no this is still 6 a.m. So, so so don't have it over here right yes yes the next would be 8 to 10 let's say then 10 to 18 8 to 10 let's say 10 to 18 and then 18 to 24 finally so let me just write it down from here so 8 to 10 you have what 200 kilowatts over here yes should I write it directly 150 150 and 0 150 and 0 then this this from 10 a.m. to 6 in the p.m. so you have this as 100 kilowatts right yes and you also have it over here as 100 right then this is till 6 p.m. so this is 6 p.m. so you have 200 over here then this is till 10 a.m. so this is 0 and this is also 0 right 200 0 0 100 yes and finally you have a 0 0 and 0 so have a look I have divided I have divided the time interval of the whole day into a number of portions now I would calculate the total demand this was the individual demand in that period now I would calculate the total demand in that particular period so 0 to 6 I have total demand of 100 6 to 8 I have a total demand of 150 50, 8 to 10 I have 350 then I have 300 and then I have 100 
right so let me check 100 150 350 300 and 100 now what can you do you can draw the load curve by yourself you can draw the load curve which would be like this this would be the time axis this would be the power axis in the kilowatts you have what you have 350 so if this is 100 this is 200 this is 300 this is 350 let's say 350 300 200 100 0 the hours are what this is for 6 this is 8 this is 10 this is 18 and this is 24 right so 0 to 6 you have 100 6 to 8 you have 150 then you have 8 to 10 you have 350 then 10 to 18 you have 300 and then 18 to 24 you have 100 so this is what this is your load curve this is your load curve now you can also draw your load duration curve from this and how will you draw it so the load duration curve you will you will shift the same thing in the in the descending order right yes so that is the first thing so from here you can see what the maximum demand from here you can see that the maximum demand is this thing this is the maximum load on the system in the given period so this is 350 kilowatts right yes sir next what was unknown load curve is done diversity factor diversity factor is the summation of maximum demands to the maximum demand of the system so this is basically the maximum demand of the system for the summation of maximum demand you do what you have a maximum demand is 200 plus b maximum demand is 100 plus c maximum demand is 50 plus d maximum demand is 100 divided by maximum demand of the system is 350 the diversity factor comes out to be what 1.286 1.286 right yes sir next what is unknown the next is the energy units are unknown so energy units you have to find the area under the curve so have a look first is 6 multiply 100 100 multiply 6 for this region plus 2 multiply 150 for this region the next is 2 multiply 350 for this region then 6 uh, sorry 8 hours 300 plus 8 multiply 300 and finally 6 multiply 100 so the energy units consumed in the day are what are 4600 kilowatt hours 4600 kilowatt hours now from here you can also find the average load so the average load would be energy over time 4600 divided by this is a daily load curve so divided by 24 and this comes out to be 191.7 191.7 kilowatts now finally the load factor is unknown so fld is the average load to the maximum demand average load is 191.7 divided by maximum demand is 350 so load factor comes out to be 54.8 percent 54.8 person and i believe i do not need to do another video uh, another example the next example is 3.12 so the same load curve is unknown maximum demand of each consumer so maximum demand of each consumer you can say from here so load factor of the station so the same thing you know the same question the same question it's repeated again so 3.12 you do it yourself the maximum demand of each consumer is in that particular group right so for instance for instance if i had a hundred kilowatts load over here the maximum demand was 200 but i have zero over here right similarly if this is 100 kilo similarly if i had let's say a 200 over here so the maximum demand would have been 200 and this you know very well so example number 3.12 let this be your homework
I will finish this video over here because I have had a longer video I believe and it would get boring if I get another example. I would get bored right. So this is something you need to know. This is you need to be careful when you are given a load you are given the diversity factor. So you are given the overall load which means this is the summation of the whole load connected to the transformer. So from that if you are finding the maximum demand from the formula of the diversity the demand factor that is fd is the maximum demand to the connected load so from here you are not finding the individual maximum demand why because this load is not an individual connected load this is the summation of the whole load con connected to the transformer so therefore the maximum demand would be the summation of all the maximum demands right so you find the summation of maximum demands from here and then you find the individual maximum demand in the transformer transformers through the formula of diversity factor where the group diversity of each group would be given and then you put it back in the main formula because the overall diversity factor of the feeder or of the system is given and you find the maximum demand on the feeder and that is it for this video i hope you have got the point yes yes sir so in the beginning maybe i've made it a little confusing i may have sound confusing but anyways this you do a number of examples or if i've told you as in the end that is an enough explanation for this to understand i will see you in the next video with maybe some uh, plant characteristics i believe so till then take care goodbye